Some time ago we had somebody post a question about daisy chaining signals between amplifiers and how you do it. It's actually really simple to do, but uh, really depends upon the amplifier that you're using. And any amplifier, especially on the professional line, made in the past probably 10 to 12 years, you can easily chain a signal from one amplifier to another. So this is sort of a uh, just a brief overview of how to signal chain the amplifiers together. And to start off with, uh, we're going to use these uh, bottom four QSCs. These are uh, model uh, 3602 amplifiers. So the um, technically we'll do 3600 watts uh, in a bridged mode at four ohms. So let's say we wanted to chain all these together to get us uh, roughly maybe 14,000 watts for subs. And I've got them configured, as you can tell right here, that the bridge mono option is set, and they're also set into parallel mode, uh, which means we're going to take a signal from this top amplifier here, we're gonna send it down to that one, we'll do the same, send the signal down to here and down to here. So anyway, it's pretty straightforward, but uh, we'll just take a look at it anyway got our signal coming in from the mixing board and we're going to go right into channel one. Now from there what we're going to do is take a cable we're going to connect it into channel two. Now we could use this position here if we wanted to and then all we've got to do is run it down to this position down here. Now most of my cables are not going to have the uh, male ends on each side to support this. Now you could get cables that are specifically used to chain amplifier signals, but then that may be an, an added cost. So what I end up using is a, a regular quarter inch cable that goes into uh, channel two. And then I connect it down to the input of channel one on the next amplifier. So even though it says this right here is an input, but in parallel mode, we can chain the signal that's coming in off of one. It'll automatically parallelize to number two. So all we gotta do is connect channel two's input, which is actually an output in that mode, and it comes down here and connects into channel one. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. And then we're gonna come down here, connect into the next channel two, and we're gonna daisy chain it on down to channel one on the next amp. And let's go. Okay, so we've got our channel connections all made. This is how we daisy chain a bunch of amplifiers together. So all the connections are made in the back and because we set these amplifiers into a bridged mode uh, through the switch in the back, we've got the two lights there, the lower yellow lights, meaning it's in parallel mode and bridged mono. The blue light obviously is power. But uh, because it's in bridged mode, we're only using channel one for the input, as uh, is that's usually common amongst uh, many amplifiers. So we're all on, everything, everything looks fine. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to just give it a signal. Check, one, two, two, one, two, two. Okay, there we go. One signal coming through the amplifier spreading to four different amplifiers. Check, one, two, two, one, two. Okay, now to run about 14,000 watts, let's say for bass, uh, that does take a lot of uh, current and a lot of power uh, to be able to produce that kind of wattage. And uh, with these plugs, which these plugs are fine, uh, I mean the power cords and everything, they are fine, but what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have to, if you don't have a generator with a uh, spider available, 
what you're probably going to end up doing is drawing power from different locations uh, around the uh, facility, wh wherever it is that you may be performing at. The, the problem with that is there is a potential <clears throat> for a ground loop to occur between the amplifiers. Now, ground loops do occur usually between front of house and the amplification, uh, the front of house amplification. However, uh, the possibility of having a ground loop occur between uh, two separate amplifiers uh, is a po it is there. Uh, I've only come across this twice. So what I've done is I've created some cables. Uh, they're sort of like this. Now this is just a regular cable. It has not been modified in any manner. And it works great if, if you know you're not going to have a ground loop problem. But if a ground loop should occur, the uh, I've made some cables that uh, I've got marked. I don't know if we can see this here or not, uh, but I've got them marked as a ground lift. And what it does, all this cable is, it just I have uh, pin number one pulled on it, and this provides a a, a ground lift uh, to combat ground loop problems between amplifiers. So when running a full uh, a full stack like this of amplification, it's very possible to get a ground loop between the amplifiers. Uh, once again, this is not a video on how to manage ground loops. It's just something to consider, uh, especially if you're running a lot of amplifiers, that just chaining does work, but you really need to think about having the ability to, uh, to, to lift a ground uh, just in case.